All right, folks, I am Technivorous. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to add a sweet custom boot screen to your Ender 3 version 2. Technivorous channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivorous. All right, to start this off, you can see I have quite a few things open here. I have uh, a couple of folders. I have Paint open and I have Photoshop open. Now we're going to be using Photoshop to edit our picture, but when we go to save it with Photoshop, for some reason the Ender 3 V2 doesn't like the JPEGs that Photoshop puts out. So we're going to resave that file using Paint and that'll work just fine. And I'll demonstrate the error it causes and how to fix it for you here in a minute. But basically we're going to navigate to this folder and I'll link to this down below. This is the TH3D Unified uh, version 2 for the Creality and the Ender 3 version 2 is in here. So this is the firmware we're going to be updating to in our firmware video. And inside here is the firmware for the LCD screen. And you can see it here. And if we go into the right folder and select it, and we are looking at the DWIN set, the DWIN set folder. And this is the folder that we are going to copy to our removable disk. It'll have to be formatted and all that, but let's just go ahead and get in here and open the file. So this zero start is the file we're going to be changing. Yours will look different. You should see a fish, the Marlin logo, and the uh, TH3D logo as well. In our case, we're going to open that up in Photoshop. And you can see I have that here. Once I save this file, you're going to get a message or you're going to get an error if you use that file. And like I said, I'll show you that error. So before going to the next step, Let's go ahead and just save the file and then open it up in uh, regular paint and then save it again as a JPEG and make sure that you're using that one. It'll ask you if you want to save over the other picture and all you have to do is hit yes. Um, then when you are ready, we will stick that onto that formatted card. So the way to format the card is pretty simple. We're going to go to the removable disk. I already have mine set up from the last time. We're going to go to Format, and we're going to hit Start. And you want to make sure you have FAT32 selected, and your allocation unit size is 4,095. 96. I can't read that on this monitor. 96. Why would it be an odd number? So Format. It's going to close my window on me. But we will open another one here. Format Complete. Open a new window, and here you can see that it is empty. So now that I have my file saved, I'm going to navigate back to the folder where my firmware was downloaded in here where it says TH3D, and then back into LCD firmware and Ender 3v2, and then right to this folder right here. So I'm going to take this and copy it. So what I want to do is put it onto that card. So I'll just take it, copy to removable disk. Now I can see that it's in there, so that's what I want. Now I can take the disc out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the back of the LCD screen. Now I will apologize for the video that I'm going to show you. The light is down quite a bit, so it's hard to see me putting it in and taking it out, but rest assured there is a slot back there. You want to make sure that the machine is powered off when you're doing this. You want to release the four screws from the back of the screen, insert the card, and then plug the cord back in. Then you're going to want to turn it back on before re-screwing everything in because you're going to want to make sure that this works. I'll show you what the next step in the process looks like right now. All right, this is what happens when you boot it back up once you have that SD card in. You're going to get a blue screen. It does that while it's loading the firmware. Once the screen firmware is loaded, it turns orange like this. Uh, you can see I adjusted the light in this frame to see a little bit better that orange color. Now... Uh, once it hits the orange screen, you're going to want to leave it like that for about 30 seconds just to be sure everything's done. And then you're going to want to go ahead and power it off and remove that card. And when we power it off and remove the card, I'm going to show you what happens when we boot this up with the uh, Photoshop picture. You can see it's pixelated and you can't see any of the intended graphics. It's supposed to look like this here, and it obviously does not. So this was the point at which I went back in, opened it up in Paint. And to correct that problem, I resaved it as a JPEG. Hit yes to overwrite that, and we will try it again. And this is the orange screen as it's loading again. And 
as I said, you're going to want to make sure that you give it enough time to ensure that the firmware is loaded. Now, I've noticed the larger the file size, the size, the longer the blue screen. Once it turns to orange, the load should be complete. So here we have the finished logo. It's a pretty simple process, and I think it worked pretty well. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Pay no attention to the mess going on behind me. Pay more attention to the mess going on on my shirt. Check this out. Finally got the merch available. That's right, finally hit 10K, so the merch is finally here. Make sure you check out the Teespring merchandise bar below the video. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe because we have more videos coming your way. In fact, I've thrown a couple of suggestions, videos for you to watch on the screen right now, so go ahead and check those out. And when you get done, don't forget to pop over and check out the merchandise. There's plenty of stuff to see, and thanks for watching, guys.